Okay, so what I'd like to talk about now is to cover what you know, is a very important model, very basic model, talking about the circular flow model. Okay, and what this model essentially is, is a graph. Okay, basically a diagram. Okay, so in terms of what you see in terms of your notes, you see it's the number of decision makers is two. And then we have also that the number of markets is two as well. So the way that we start this is with the decision makers. Okay, so in terms of the decision makers, we have on the one hand households, okay, on the other, firms. Okay, so households and firms. Okay, so in terms of the markets, we then have two. Two are the markets for inputs and the markets for outputs. Okay, and so the idea is in terms of looking at this, households, what is it for in terms of inputs? Okay, so the inputs are basically what are used to make goods and services. Okay, and then the outputs just basically refer to those goods and services. Okay, so in terms of households, the idea is, according to this model, the inputs are provided okay, by these households okay, into these markets. Okay, and then what happens is, in terms of the outputs, In terms of the inputs, in terms of the firms, the inputs are basically bought. They are rented. Okay. All right. So in terms of then, what do the firms do with these inputs? What do they do with things like you know labor, equipment? They basically turn it into outputs. Okay, and then these outputs actually become what? Well, they're provided and then they're actually bought by the households. Okay, so the idea is, is that in terms of the circular flow, the inputs are provided by the households, then bought or rented by the firms, which then turn these inputs into the outputs that they supply, which are then bought by the households. Okay. All right, so this has to do with essentially the flow of the goods and services. Okay. Now, one other aspect, though, of this model is talking about the flow of money. Okay, so the flow of money, again, we can do is to start off with households. Basically, how do they get this output? Where does it come from? Or how do they exchange? They basically buy it. Okay, so this is basically spending on the part of the households. Okay, and so in terms of the spending, what does this spending then become for the firms? It becomes their revenue. Okay, basically the money coming into the firm. All right, and then what do they do with this revenue? Well, they have to pay for the inputs. Okay, so in terms of paying for the inputs, they have to do what? Okay, well, basically they have to pay wages, essentially rent, okay? And then what does this become in terms of the households? This becomes their income. Okay, and so that's how we get the circular flow model. Okay, basically starting off with the decision makers, adding in the markets, 
looking at these flows, first the goods and services, and then the flow of money, and there we have the model. Okay, some other things that are also important, very quickly, is in terms of the flaws. Okay, the flaws basically come from the fact of what is the scale of this model. The model is actually national in scale. And so what are some big components of a, basically a national economy that are omitted in this model? They're the following. Okay, it's basically the flaws are that there is no, no government, no financial institutions, that is, no banks, and also, as you can see, it's basically an economy by itself, like an island, there's no international sector, no international trade. Okay, all right, so this is the circular flow model, and these are the flaws associated with it.